The only other part of monopolies that you really have to understand for the AP test is the idea of price discrimination. Uh, so to first define what price discrimination is, we have to say what it isn't really, uh, because everything that we've been looking at before has been a single price monopolist. Uh, so this is when the consumers all get charged the same price. This is what we're used to in our heads, the idea that everybody, you go to purchase it, you go to the store, it's the same price, no matter who you are or when you show up to buy it, unless there's a legitimate price change. Um, for uh, price discrimination, that doesn't happen. There are different prices charged to different consumers for the exact same good. Um, the, the whole idea is trying to charge people individually a different price for the good. So why do they do this? Well, profit. Uh, they are able to make a lot more profit if they are able to charge all of the different prices along the demand curve. It works because people have different elasticities. Remember, the demand curve shows how much people are willing to pay for the product. So if you can take advantage of that, you can eat up the entire consumer surplus. Uh, it, now, doing that in many cases can uh, reduce the deadweight loss as well. So how do you do this? Well, th there's a few different ways, and this list isn't obviously is not all encompassing, uh, but here's just a few ways, and these are pretty common. Advanced purchase restrictions. Uh, you can either get a lower price for buying early or for buying late, depending on what's going on. Um, so a, a really good example of this is uh, flights. If you buy your flight really far in advance, that implies that you have a fairly um, high level of elasticity. You're not being bullied into to making that purchase right away. So your price is frequently going to be lower. Um, if uh, you are buying last minute, you run to the uh, the website, you check what they have going on in terms of the price for a flight out the next day, chances are you're a business traveler. If you're a business traveler, you don't have a choice. You have a very uh, inelastic demand curve at that point. And therefore, you will pay a much higher price for that same product. Um, so even though it's the same exact product, you ended up paying a different price. Uh, in some cases, uh, that is different. Um, you also see this happening with concerts. Sometimes if you buy tickets at the door, um, if you already showed up to the concert, they're kind of assuming that they've got you uh, and they'll, they'll charge you a higher price. Uh, but sometimes uh, if you pay attention to um, uh, uh, StubHub or something like that, if you are getting closer and closer to the um, uh, closer and closer to the event, price all of a sudden drops because they now realize that they're not going to be able to sell those tickets and you'll then snatch them up and then you go to the place. Um, now, one, now that's a little bit different because it's, you know, not the same seller in all cases, but it is absolutely possible um, because you do have certain official sellers selling on StubHub as opposed to individuals. Um, volume discounts are another uh, easy way to understand this. Uh, so if you buy a lot of a good, chances are you're going to get a lower price. Think going to Sam's Club or Costco. You can get a lower price buying a lot of something as opposed to going to your grocery store and picking it up because that's a much smaller amount. Uh, even if you go into the grocery store and you try to purchase stuff, you see two different sizes of the same thing. Relatively, the smaller one is always going to be more expensive. The larger one, because you're buying to a degree in bulk, is going to be cheaper um, uh, per ounce or uh, per, per unit as you look at it. Uh, frequently, if you look at the price tag, it'll say uh, in the upper left-hand corner of a lot of price tags how much per unit or per ounce uh, whatever good you're buying is. So a good habit to get into when you go to the store is to check that out and see if it matters to you how much more you're paying to get the smaller um, the smaller unit. Um, a second idea for this is two-part tariffs. Uh, so essentially, it's a discount for buying a lot, but not the same way as a volume discount is. So you buy one at a high price, and then you have the option to purchase more at lower prices. So it's kind of like a volume discount, but 
uh, you don't buy, you don't necessarily have to buy it all, and it's not in preset amounts necessarily. Um, now there are, of course, more types of price discrimination. Uh, this is not all encompassing, but you do have to know the idea of these more than specifically what they are. Now, what does this look like graphically? Uh, so basically, if the firm itself is trying to charge each consumer his or her maximum uh, willingness to pay, well, then what they're doing is they're capturing the consumer surplus and adding it to their profits. So whereas before, if there was a single price monopolist, you see that on the left here, uh, MC equals MR gets you your, um, gets you your quantity price set by the demand curve. They're charging this price. Then this would all that shaded area would be consumer surplus. When you are price discriminating, that doesn't matter. So assuming that you are price discriminating, you as a firm no longer really care about your MC equals MR price. Now, if you produce beyond the MC, uh, you're no longer being socially optimal. So firms won't really do that. However, if we look at it now, a perfectly price discriminated will produce where MC equals uh, demand, assuming that ATC is below that point. If ATC is above, left, above that point, they'll just produce to where the ATC meets demand. Down to the ATC, over to the y-axis. This all now, this entire trapezoid that I'm outlining here, has become monopoly profit because they charge somebody this price. They charge somebody this price, this price, this price, this price, this price, and all the way down until you're socially optimal or your break-even price, whichever one came first. So should there be government intervention with this? Because a lot of times it feels wrong. Um, well, unlikely. Um, and that's because it actually increases efficiency and it increases total surplus since in many cases they're going to uh, eliminate that dead weight loss that exists or at least part of it. Uh, so in most cases, you're not going to see, um, you're not going to see anybody um, intervening here. Uh, now it could be regulated if it creates some sort of inequity. If it's um, price discrimination, but you know, discriminatory about a, uh, a certain group of people, uh, that is different. Um, and that will obviously be regulated. And that's all you have to know for monopolies for the AP test.